Yeah, you know, I, I think I had had some, some conversations with Rose about the events and just how, how excited they were to, to be a part of this. And, you know, they had done a 75th anniversary event uh, previously and were looking to really up their game for the, the 80th. And we were just kind of talking about what they had planned and Rose was very excited with the descendants and, and, and all that were going to be involved. And, you know, honestly, I was, I was doing, as I recall, doing research, just kind of uh, looking back at the story, understanding um, some of the history. Uh, I remember reading um, this, uh, this account that was written and it talked about how the prosecutor just didn't pursue the charges um, and, um, and that there wasn't a, a disposition of any kind. And you know the, the message I got from the history was really that that there was it, it was it was almost like a shame of the charges uh, that the, you know the, the justice system just decided to pre prevent or, or ignore that they ever happened. Um, and so I got to thinking. I was like, wow. I wonder. You know, I wonder if they were ever really dropped, and and if there was a formal process. And I'm not a lawyer, certainly not a prosecutor. And so I call Brian, and I call Brian all the time. You know, I checked in with him a couple of weeks later, and uh, he said, well, you know, I done a little research I, I can't I can't find anything I can't find any any disposition of these charges um, so they're they're very likely still just kind of out there and um, and I said well you know is there can you can you formally drop them you know is there a way to get them dropped and he's like let me let me check uh, let me check with the judge and, and see um, uh, see what she thinks and um, and so he had come back a, a couple uh, uh, days later, and he said, "You know, I had a conversation, and 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 I think she's willing to 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 do something here, and and so then you know then it kind of started rolling, and so you know I talked to Rose, and I said, you know, this this is this is what um, uh, Brian said, and 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 she was very excited, and uh, and we decided to tie it together with this event that they were doing um, uh, uh, for the descendants, and." And I remember I was looking back in my email last night uh, in preparation for this conversation, and I, and I remember uh, when they sent out the notice for the event, and I, and I sent it to Brian, I said, here's your deadline. <laughs> it's like, now you got to get it done by this, by this day. And, um, and he did, you know, they, they worked, um, he worked with the judge in the clerk's office and, uh, and, and got the order done. And, you know, and I remember, um, I remember reading that order. And, you know, I, I'm not... Um, Perhaps to my detriment, I am, I am not generally a, uh, a, a politician who, uh, who likes kind of the performative acts and the, and the things that I, I think are, are perhaps not as tied to, to policies and, and, and things that are going to solve problems. Um, but I have come to appreciate that, um, that there is a value in the, in the symbolic and, the, and oftentimes the symbolic ties together with the, with the more substantive. And, and I think watching that night um, the uh, reactions of the um, particularly the descendants um, and and seeing it tie together with kind of their memories of uh, of what their family members had done on that day uh, very young family members um, was was really powerful to me and uh, and I know a lot of other people who were in that room or watched that um, you know, had a similar reaction where they had had walked away with kind of a, a, a better understanding, obviously, of our history, but, um, but an appreciation that, um, you know, certainly not able to change um, that history, but at least a, a feeling that um, today, on that day in 2019, uh, we were able to um, at least push a wrong uh, back in a better direction. And so that was, um, that was powerful. Yeah, well, you, you know, I, I think I would um, say to answer that question, you know, you got to read that letter that Samuel Tucker wrote um, when, because initially to try to mollify him, um, you know, they had said, oh, we'll, g we'll give you uh, library cards at this, you know, separate but equal uh, library um, that we've set up, and, and Samuel Tucker writes this letter um, in his 20s at this point, a brand new lawyer, um, writes this letter saying, um, basically, no, <laughs> not going to, not, that's not going to be acceptable, and, uh, and citing the, uh, the inequity um, in that, 
the, the provision of those resources. And, and, and I think the, what it teaches us about today is, I mean, we are still dealing today with um, inequities in our community, in the way resources are allocated, um, the, the results, um, the, the disparate impact of, of city policies in housing and education and the criminal justice system, wealth attainment, um, health, uh, and those um, those persist today, and and you know the decisions we make up on this dais um, are uh, are oftentimes attempts to try to ameliorate some of those um, those uh, those inequities. And so, I think you know we look back at 80, 83 years ago now um, and say like, okay, this is these were the inequities we were dealing with in in one set of per city services, uh, the provision of, of library library services, um, you know, those same inequities that they were sitting in uh, to, to change um, exist today. Now, we don't have um, the kind of de jure uh, uh, legal uh, barriers that exist um, for access to these city services, but we might as well, um, you know, for the way that some of these inequities exist in a lot of different um, areas today. And so I think for us, that's the that's kind of the, the clarion call for us. It's 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 looking at at um, at how we uh, take, you know, what what they were doing 80 years ago, which was really, really groundbreaking. And I, and I think. Uh, that, for me, that's always the part that I, I feel like is most amazing about this story is when you appreciate this story, everyone's like, oh yeah, this was in the, the 60s, right? And I was like, no, no, <laughs> this is 1939, right? And, and, and I think that's, that's what I don't, I don't think most people realize is how groundbreaking this was, uh, this kind of activism, this you know, shining a light on these inequities, the bravery associated with it. And even today, um, you know, picking apart these inequities in our, that exist in our community requires a heck of a lot of bravery and, and, and courage. And it's, it's unfortunate, even in a community like Alexandria, that it requires that. But, I mean, look at any debate um, around uh, the provision of, of resources or policy decisions that address inequities, particularly in education and housing, um, and certainly in the criminal justice system, and they are hotly, hotly controversial issues in the community. Um, you know, I, I think that if you asked people and you kind of showed, if you showed them that mirror and you looked at 39 and looked at the experience there and you, and you looked at people in 2022 who are involved in these debates and said, look, um, they wouldn't see themselves in that. Um, but I'm sure the people in 1939 also wouldn't see themselves, uh, didn't see themselves that way. Um, in, in the way they uh, they were approaching those decisions, and and you know we're all guilty of that. Like I, I'm I'm sure there's a lot of things that I advocate for uh, today that I'll look back 80 years from now, hopefully, um, and and say, well, gosh, what the heck was I thinking? Um, but uh, you know, it, it's a I think that's that's the lessons that 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 we can draw and, and we'll continue to draw from it. Yeah, sure. I, I mean, I, I think my initial reaction whenever I understand this story and read about this story and kind of peel apart other parts of the history is less about kind of my, um, my background, uh, my racial background, and more about age. Um, in that um, I'm always, I always marvel at how young everyone involved in the situation was. And what... Um, what courage was required to be that young? Um, not just the, the, the five who, um, who, who actually did this sit in, but also Samuel Tucker, you know, who, you know, mid 20s starting his legal career and challenging an entire system that underpinned everything that, that he knew of. And, um, and, obviously would go on to incredible um, successes um, in, in the courts in kind of, you know, really killing Jim Crow. Um, but uh, I just marvel at that. And, and think about, um, you know, I mean, these were, these were kids who were, kids really, who were not much older than, than, than my son 
and and thinking about what their parents must have thought well you know what are you doing um but uh but it just so that that personal courage that was required that's for me that's what always uh, sticks out and then you know as 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 um as someone who kind of grew up literally in the middle of all of this literally in the middle of it um with uh with um you know a a um, like i i never thought i mean obviously with a dad that was black and a mother is white like i i never thought of um like my existence as being activism if you will but um it it, it obviously some people would see it that way um you know it's just who i am and in my family um but uh but this this um this story was one that um it, it's just the, the the courage of it all is is what always stuck with me and um you know that's kind of always how i've unpacked it in my head um and and then it's just it's um there's also a feeling of um almost inadequacy because i'm sitting here thinking oh my gosh you know um you know i'm I'm a lot older now than these kids um, were, and uh, and you know what are we doing? You know what are what are we up to? What what are we going to look back and say like, oh, that was courageous that you did that? Um, and 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 I think it, it does kind of challenge us to to, to up our game in a, in a variety of different ways. You know, I think the the other thing that I was always struck by on this was I don't think I fully appreciate it. Again, as I said earlier, like I'm I'm not prone to the um, I try not to be prone to the performative and the and, and the symbolic. Um, try to be more to the substantive if I can. And I was struck at how many people reached out afterward mm -hmm. and were either there or heard about it or saw it and were really, really impacted. And I, and I think it helped me understand the power of, um, of those kind of gestures um, in, in, um, in, 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 not repairing is probably the wrong word, but um, it, at least what they, how they have impact people in in um, in their perception of both history but also uh, the present and so many folks sent me emails and notes and and kind of came up to me and said you know that was that was really really powerful like i'm glad brian did that like i'm really like that was so important in, in that moment when you know when he handed those petitions to the to the family members and and they grabbed that paper like um that was, you know, and that, as I rewatch that, I can imagine now those, you know, those those documents hanging on some some family wall somewhere in in, in those in, in family homes, and and uh, and that's really that's really powerful. <laughs>